a new study, UCLA scientists say a particular gene affects people's feelings of optimism, self-esteem, and control over their own lives. Psychologists say that's important because people who have those feelings are better at handling depression and stress. So we asked some people if they believe genetics can make you an optimist or a pessimist. Hmm. A gene doesn't just define who you are through your entire life. I think it's who teaches you and what you, know, you learn from the people around you, more so than just you're born happy. Gene related. I think you're predisposed to have certain personality traits of your parents. I believe that like it probably is something to do with like how you're raised and like I guess like how you're born. My parents are a little bit more pessimistic than I am and I just was around people in school and have mentors that kind of brought it home for me and showed me how to be optimistic. I definitely think it's circumstantial um, based on the real, uh, events that you've lived and how you view your life. Uh, if it was a gene, I don't think it would change. I think you would be stuck being pessimistic, and I don't want to think that. <laughs> I guess I'm an optimist, so. The old nature versus nurture argument. Yeah. Well, <laughs> joining us to discuss is psychologist and early show contributor, Dr. Jennifer Hartstein. Great to have you with us, Jennifer, Good as morning. always. So what does this new study show? Well, this new study is really interesting. It's the first of its kind to find that there is actually some sort of genetic variation that can show us that optimism can be some sort of genetic disposition. So the oxytocin receptor gene, which is the gene that helps us with stress management, empathy, social relations, yeah. there is a variation on that that allows people to actually be more optimistic. And the same kind of a variation can actually have people be more predisposed to depression. So it is an interesting, there is a genetic component in some way. So uh, I guess the exact definition of optimism for right. people out there that are wondering, what does it really mean? <laughs> what does it really what mean? What does it really mean? Well, it's one of three psychological resources that we look at. Self-esteem being included in there and mastery, which means kind of the control over your environment. And what it is, is it really is looking at the glass half full. It's looking at things as though they are going to turn out positively, looking at the brighter side of things. All of those cliches we use really are the definition. It's how we look at things and expect positive outcomes. If you look at examples in the real world, it seems like there is some nature and some nurture involved here in every case in terms of whether people are optimistic or not. Absolutely. It is not genetics alone. There are certain things that genetics determine, our eye color, genetics. There's no variation there unless you get contact <laughs> lenses, right? But the fact is, is that in the world, in other ways, genetics are influenced by our environment. So if you're in a positive environment, you're going to be more likely to have more optimistic beliefs. So we do have a little bit of nature and a little bit of nurture working together to determine how optimistic someone is. Now you say you can improve your optimistic outlook mm -hmm. by changing some of your negative thoughts. Yes, <laughs> it's true. Chris, <laughs> I'm okay. It's true. First, you really have to identify what the problem is. So if I had a fight with my friend, my negative thoughts might take over and I might think, it's all going to go downhill and we're never going to be friends again. So I want to notice those. What are the thoughts that I'm having? And then I really want to posit some arguments to those thoughts and really say, well, is that true? What's going to happen? How am I going to be? And if we can really challenge those, we will notice we feel better and we will keep doing it. It's noticing the negative, challenging it with a logical argument. Your thoughts aren't facts. Mm -hmm. Figure out how to challenge them with some things that might make you think more positively. And then how might you use that optimism and the more optimistic mentality to make things more positive and more positive experiences for yourself going forward? There are so many benefits to being positive and having optimism. Physically, you'll be healthier, you'll manage stress better, your emotional health will be better. We know those two things go together a lot. You will have more perseverance. Positive people persevere more, they don't give up. So you really have a lot of benefit if you can switch that thinking process. Would you say you're a positive person? I generally am. What Would do you, you say you're a positive I, person? I think I really am. You? you? Really? What about you? I really do. <laughs> do you really want to well, rethink you that? Disagree with me? <laughs> you want to rethink that question? <laughs> Let's have a positive end uh, of the day, Chris. Jennifer, thank you very much. Thanks. Dr. Hartstein, good to see you Thanks. as always.